Hey guys, welcome back to another Genshin Impact character guide. Today we're going to talk about Hu Tao, one of the strongest and most lovable characters in the game. She has very unique mechanics, utilizing her HP, and her elemental burst is extremely strong that also heals her. We'll go over how to play Hu Tao, her best weapons, artifacts, team comps, and her constellations. I highly recommend watching the beginning of this video to learn some basic and advanced tips on how to use her, but feel free to use the timestamps for your own needs. So yeah, let's get started. A quick disclaimer, Hu Tao's mechanics and gameplay can be a little bit tricky, but I encourage everyone to play her however you like. I will do my best to cover every playstyle and make this guide friendly to casual and meta players. First, let's talk about her talents. You will mainly use her normal attacks with her elemental skill activated, which consumes 30% of her HP to increase her attack and infuses her weapon with pyro. Her 6 hit attack sequence is a standard 3 hit combo, followed by a 4th hit, then a 5th hit that hits twice, and a final 6th horizontal hit that has a wide range. After her standard 3 hit combo, there is some delay between each hit onwards. This is worth noting because Hu Tao's elemental skill is limited to 9 seconds only. In general, I recommend using up to the 4th hit and I'll explain in detail later in the combo sequence section of this guide. For her 6th hit, you generally don't want to use it because you can't follow it up with a charge attack, which is her strongest auto attack, it has a high end lag, and makes smaller enemies go flying and you'll miss out on some damage. However, if you do commit to her 6th hit for faster DPS, you can either dash, jump forward, switch characters, or use your elemental burst for medium sized enemies who don't get pushed back too far. Utao's charge attack lunges her forward, and the initial startup is extremely fast, and it is very strong, especially with vaporize or melt reactions. You can combine a certain amount of normal attacks into charge attacks for optimal damage, which I will explain in the next section. Because charge attacks linger for a while, it's important to animation cancel for faster DPS. At C0, you will mostly jump in place or jump directionally to save stamina. At C1, you will be mostly dash cancelling since her charge attacks will not consume any stamina during her elemental skill. Smaller enemies will go flying when hit, but thanks to the forward momentum of charge attacks, you should be able to follow up easily. The startup is so quick that you can use it to dodge attacks and as an escape option. Hitting enemies with their charge attacks will mark enemies with Blood Blossom, which inflicts pyro damage every 4 seconds for 8 seconds. Blood Blossom's duration can be refreshed if you mark the enemies again. Before your elemental skill runs out, make sure to use charge attacks to leave behind some blood blossoms on your enemies so that your party members can synergize with the damage. Later in this guide, I will also go over some advanced tips for her charge attacks as well as blood blossom. Now let's talk about Hu Tao's optimal combo sequences. Here are the terms I will be using. The letter N with a number will mean the number of normal attacks during her elemental skill, so N2 will mean 2 normal attacks. DC stands for dash cancel. JC stands for jump cancel. And finally, CA stands for charge attack. Her attack sequences will heavily depend on whether you are C0 or C1. So yeah, let's start with C0 first. 2 or 3 normal attacks to charge attack to animation cancel is your bread and butter C0 Hu Tao combo. 2 normal attacks into charge attack feels very smooth and you will be able to squeeze in more charge attacks. 3 normal attacks to charge attack feels smooth as well and has slightly better stamina management. You will mostly jump cancel these animations but for people that hate jumping, you can dash cancel if you have high stamina. You can also use 2 normal attacks at high stamina and 3 normal attacks with medium stamina. Using either 2 or 3 normal attacks can be a personal preference as well, so feel free to experiment with it or mix and match. 4 normal attacks to charge attack to jump cancel is used when you have very low or no stamina, and it helps you refill enough stamina to do another charge attack. If you are really running low on stamina, you can skip the charge attack and jump cancel instead. One advanced tip is that if you are running vaporized reactions with Xing Chou, the fourth hit will vaporize if you are able to vaporize the first hit, which will let you do massive damage. Now for C1 Hu Tao. One normal attack to charge attack to dash cancel is your bread and butter combo. Hu Tao can do some massive damage in a short amount of time with the sequence since her charge attacks won't consume stamina, and if you have high stamina, you should be able to use the sequence until her elemental skill is over. Keep in mind that if you do this sequence too quickly, it will trigger a character's dash cooldown, so you would have to jump cancel the third sequence. C0 Hu Tao can also use this sequence, but I would only recommend once or twice during her elemental skill. One normal attack to charge attack to jump cancel is used when you have no stamina left. Remember, you can still use charge attacks even if you have zero stamina at C1, so this is the next best possible combo sequence. Two normal attacks to charge attack to animation cancel is another great option and does a good amount of damage. The main reason to use this instead of one normal attack is because of the dash cooldown mentioned before. During two normal attacks, Hu Tao should be able to dash cancel again with no issues, providing smoother gameplay. 
This could potentially do more damage overall than one normal attack to charge attack since it has some flexibility with timing and execution. Before we dive into more advanced tips for Hu Tao, I want to first talk about her basic fundamentals and mechanics so you understand how to play her. Hu Tao relies heavily on her HP to function in several ways. When you activate her elemental skill, it consumes 30% of her current HP and it does three things. It increases her attack based on a percentage of her max HP, it infuses her weapon with pyro, and increases her resistance to interruption. It has a duration of 9 seconds with a cooldown of 16 seconds. Once the elemental skill ends, she has 7 seconds of downtime where you can switch to your party members to support and set up. Thanks to her first passive talent, Hu Tao's party members will have their crit rate increased by 12% for 8 seconds once her elemental skill is over. 99% of the time, you will be attacking during your elemental skill duration. When it is not active, Hu Tao will barely do any damage with her auto attacks and elemental burst as she has the lowest base attack in the game. The amount of HP you want to be at after activating her elemental skill is at 50% HP or lower for several reasons. She gains a 33% pyro damage bonus after you unlock her second passive talent, her elemental burst does more damage and heals more, and if you have Staff of Homa, she gains an additional attack bonus from the passive. Now it's ultimately up to you how you play Hu Tao. You can simply play her without following all these strict mechanics since she will be very strong regardless, but it does feel rewarding when you can bring out her true potential. A few more things to note is that Hu Tao has some defensive capabilities. As of today, she has the highest base HP and is tied with Albedo for having the highest base defense in the game. Her elemental skill increases her resistance to interruption, and if you combine them with Xing Chou's rain swords, it increases even further. Because she is such a tank, feel free to take a couple of hits if it can help you reach 50% HP or lower. Now for some advanced tips on how to manage your HP and elemental skill duration. First, you want to have an idea of how much your 70% HP and 50% HP is. Knowing how much your 70% HP is lets you know when it's best to activate your elemental skill so that you can be at 50% HP or lower. Knowing how much your 50% HP is lets you know that you're doing optimal damage. To calculate 70% HP, just press your elemental skill at 100% HP since your elemental skill consumes 30% HP. For 50% HP, just divide your max HP by 2. If you press your elemental skill again from 70% HP, you'll be at around 49% HP, so this number is good to know as well. Now here's a visual cue you can use to estimate Hu Tao's HP during combat. If you look at her HP bar, you will see this forward slash here. Depending on how much HP you have, this slash is around 50% HP. Keep in mind that it is not completely accurate, but if you notice your HP bar is considerably lower or higher than this slash, you'll have a rough idea of how close or far you are from 50% HP. I don't recommend using these next visual cues, but they are worth noting. You will see red arrows around Hu Tao when she's at or below 50% HP for the 33% pyro damage bonus, but you can easily get confused with other buffs if your party member buffs you or you select a Spiral Abyss buff. If you have the Staff of Homa, it will light up when you're at or below 50% HP, but it is not a very reliable visual cue during combat. Now for her elemental skill cooldown. When activating it, you'll see there's a timer in the skill icon. The number you want to focus on is 7, because that's when her elemental skill ends and your attack buff runs out. Since you should be glancing down at your screen for your HP, take some time to glance at your elemental skill cooldown as well for the number 7. I like to make sure I get my charge attacks, blood blossoms, and the elemental burst finished right before 7 seconds, just to be safe. Now for her elemental burst. Hu Tao attacks enemies with her ghost friend in a complete 360 degrees. Its AoE is massive, does a ton of damage, and it heals Hu Tao. It has a medium energy cost of 60 and a cooldown of 15 seconds. Her burst heals a certain percentage of her max HP, and you can multiply that number by the number of enemies she hits, 5 enemies being the maximum. So if my Hu Tao usually heals 4,485 for one enemy, she will heal 4,485 times 5 for 5 enemies. If her HP is 50% or lower, her burst will do more damage and heal more. Make sure to use her burst right before her elemental skill ends for optimal damage. Overhealing can be a problem when using her burst, so many players refrain from using it too much or they keep their talents under leveled or at max level 8. It may be ideal to use her burst when there are only 1-3 to three enemies or keep the lowest amount of HP possible and have a shielder in your party. This way, she can enjoy higher damage and you won't overheal. Hu Tao's Blood Blossom is like a death sentence for her enemies. Here are a few tricks to maximize Blood Blossom's damage. Blood Blossom can crit, react with other elements for more damage, and be increased with Elemental Resistance Reduction or Elemental Mastery Transfer. 
As you can see here, my Blood Blossom normally does about 24,000 damage. With Vaporize, it does about 31,000. With Melt, it does about 48,000. First, I apply Blood Blossom. Then I get ready to set up Shingcho's Burst again while applying Hydro for Vaporize. Next, I set up Diorina's Shield to protect my Hutao, which also sets up for a Melt Reaction. Then I switch to Zucrose for Elemental Mastery Transfer for a strong Blood Blossom. Using C1 Zhangling and Goba, Zhongli's Shield, and many other buffs will also increase this damage. Now let's talk about some intermediate and advanced tips for Hu Tao's charge attack. Let's learn how to effectively animation cancel her charge attack, starting with jump cancel. When you use Hu Tao's charge attack, you can jump cancel almost immediately right after. You will be able to dish out damage very quickly this way, so practice the timing. Start off slowly if you need to, and gradually pick up the pace. This requires good reaction time since her charge attack comes out very fast and make sure to keep up with the rhythm when you do multiple charge attacks. Next, let's learn a technique I like to call lingering charge attack which is quite the opposite of jump cancelling immediately. Basically, you jump cancel forward right before the end of a charge attack that lingers and you keep moving towards another enemy. This is used when enemies are very spread out. To get to the enemies quicker, I like to initiate a charge attack from a distance and let it slide all the way to the end and then I jump towards the direction of the next enemy. It actually feels very smooth and fun to use, so give it a try. Now let's learn some advanced techniques that involves dash cancelling. This first technique is more for single target enemies and C1 Hu Tao. First you want to rotate the camera. You can make your character face left or right, but I will be facing left in this demonstration. Press or hold A and do a charge attack, and then press D while dashing and back to A and you just loop this process. You will see that this actually cancels out a full dash unless you attack out of it faster. In other words, you are cancelling your dash cancel. The key is to dash cancel as soon as you start your charge attack, just like with jump cancels. And the main reason to do everything like this is that you can attack out of your dash faster. If you can do this properly, especially against enemies you cannot pass through such as Ruin Guards and Hypostasis enemies, you will do some massive damage very quickly. But there is a slight problem with this technique. If you dash too quickly or time it incorrectly, you will trigger Hu Tao's dash cooldown. In Genshin Impact, if you dash quickly twice, you won't be able to do a third dash right away. This same rule applies if you dash cancel too quickly with Hu Tao. You can see here I did this technique too quickly with incorrect timing so I was stuck in the third charge attack animation. Now there are several ways to get around this. If you do a charge attack and dash out right away, let the dash linger just a little bit before you do another charge attack. This way it won't trigger the dash cooldown. This is the hardest way out of the dash cooldown but once you master it, it becomes easier to do. You can also just slow down in general as well. Two other solutions you can do is to do two cycles of dash cancel charge attacks to a jump cancel charge attack. The other solution is to cycle with two normal attacks into charge attack instead of just one normal attack. The time to do a second normal attack should negate the dash cooldown. The next and final solution is not for everyone since there are multiple inputs and can be unnecessary for some. This advanced technique not only solves the dash cooldown issue but with all issues with Hu Tao's charge attack. Let's first go over some issues with Hu Tao's charge attacks and dash cancelling. If you dash cancel too fast, it will trigger the dash cooldown. Smaller enemies go flying and it's easier for jump cancelling to hit instead of dash cancelling. It's hard to control the direction, especially with multiple enemies. And the AoE isn't the best if you don't attack enemies in a single line. The technique that can solve all these issues is what I like to call a circle charge attack. Basically, you input an entire 360 degrees dash so that she goes around in a full circle. So I am inputting W, A, S, D after every dash cancel. For the dash cooldown problem, the lingering circle dash will ensure you can keep dash cancelling without any issues. When smaller enemies go flying, you can dash backwards in a circle to give them some time to land on the ground and it will be easier to hit them. Also when you do it this way, you have full control of where you want the enemy and Hu Tao to go. So in the Spiral Abyss, I can easily push an enemy towards another enemy that is far away so that I can attack them together. Just make sure Hu Tao and the camera is facing the direction you want to go. When there are multiple enemies, it is extremely hard to choose where Hu Tao wants to go and hit them together with a charge attack. Using the circle charge attack, hitting two enemies in a desired direction is no problem as long as you can rotate the camera in the direction you want to go with Hu Tao facing that way and that Hu Tao is close enough to auto-aim the enemy getting hit by the charge attack. Now for team rotations. If you have Xing Chou in your party and you're not using the Veridescent set to lower enemies' power resistance, always start with Xing Chou first. If your burst can be recharged after one elemental skill, use the second elemental skill with your sacrificial sword and do an E to Q cancel so that you can regain some energy for your next burst. 
If your burst is already full, do an E to Q cancel and use the second elemental skill right after Hu Tao is done with her elemental skill so that you can start the next rotation faster. His burst might be on cooldown, but you can potentially start off faster this way. If your burst is very low on energy, just use two elemental skills to regain back your burst. If you have a Refinement 5 Sacrificial Sword, the passive's cooldown should come back after Hu Tao is finished. After you set up with Xing Chou, you can slowly take your time setting up with your other party members and then start attacking with Hu Tao. The reason you want to start with Xing Chou first is because of his cooldowns. His elemental skill has a cooldown of 21 seconds, and his elemental burst has a cooldown of 20 seconds. Hu Tao's elemental skill lasts for only 9 seconds, so if you switch from Xing Chou to Hu Tao right away, there is a lot of downtime before you can start setting up with Xing Chou again. Setting up with other party members after ensures you don't need to wait too long until you can set up with Xing Chou again. Here's a sample rotation. After setting up Xing Chou, I switch to Diona to provide a shield and transfer 80 elemental mastery from her instructor set. Then I get ready to swirl Cryo into Sucrose's burst and transfer 48% attack to Hu Tao with Draining Tails. Then my Hu Tao can do some serious damage. If you're using an animal character with the Veridescent set and a Pyro character, start with them first. Apply Pyro and then swirl to lower enemies' power resistance, and then switch to Xing Chou and set up once again. You would just repeat the same process after Hu Tao is finished. Also here's a bonus tip. Try to jump cancel with your other party members to save stamina for Hu Tao so that she can do more charge attacks. If you are running a sub DPS so that you could keep attacking during Hu Tao's downtime, you can switch to them right after Hu Tao's elemental skill is over. Your sub DPS should have some time left with Xing Chou's burst. Then begin setting up with Xing Chou again after his rain swords are over or when your sub DPS is finished attacking. If you have C2 Xing Chou, his burst duration is extended for 3 seconds, so your sub DPS should be able to use his rain swords for a short time. Now for talent prioritization. Prioritize Hu Tao's normal attacks and elemental skill equally. Note that leveling her elemental skill will also increase Blood Blossom's damage. Then prioritize her elemental burst last. As mentioned before, many Hu Tao players do not crown or level up her elemental burst too high because it can heal too much. You can keep it at level 8 or lower if that's your preference. If you can manage her playstyle well however, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Now let's look at her constellations. Hu Tao's Constellation 1 is one of the most sought out constellations for a 5 star character in my opinion. During her elemental skill, her charge attacks do not consume any stamina and it gives her a decent boost in DPS. Constellation 2 has two parts. It increases Blood Blossom's damage and Hu Tao's elemental burst can apply Blood Blossom. This is only a minor upgrade and probably not worth actively pursuing for. Constellation 3 increases her elemental skill level by 3. Constellation 4 gives Hu Tao's party members 12% more crit rate for 15 seconds if an enemy is defeated by Blood Blossom. This is also a minor upgrade. Constellation 5 increases her elemental burst level by 3. Constellation 6 is a very interesting one. If Hu Tao's HP is below 25% or an attack was about to kill her, her elemental and physical resistance is increased by 200%, crit rate by 100%, and her resistance to interruption is significantly increased. These buffs are triggered also when she has 1 HP, so she cannot die every 60 seconds. This constellation really embodies her mechanics and character where she literally becomes invincible when she is closer to death. Now for weapons for Hu Tao. I'll be making a tier list that is ordered based on each weapon's damage output, usability, and subjective claims. I will link more resources that explain more in detail in the description below. Staff of Homa is hands down her best in slot. Its secondary status crit damage and its passive was custom made for Hu Tao. It increases her HP by 20%, provides an attack bonus based on her max HP, and gives another attack bonus if her HP is below 50%. Deathmatch is a consistent and reliable weapon for Hu Tao. It has a secondary stat of crit rate which works well with Hu Tao's ascension stat of crit damage. The attack and defense buff on the passive is a plus but not anything significant. However, this weapon still does a good amount of damage. The low base attack doesn't actually matter for Hu Tao since she converts her attack from HP anyway. You also don't need to rely on any gimmicks for buffs. The only downside is that you need to purchase the battle pass. Dragon's Bane has a lot of potential, but there are some downsides to it. First, you absolutely need Xing Chou in your party to use this weapon consistently. Its elemental mastery secondary stat boosts reaction damage, and the passive increases overall damage against enemies affected by Pyro or Hydro. It truly shines at Refinement 5, but this can be overlooked. Primordial Jade Spear can be a decent option, but it doesn't really match well with Hu Tao's kit. For example, 5 star weapons usually provide high base attack for more damage, but with Hu Tao's low base attack, it doesn't really boost her damage as much like other characters. Crit rate from its secondary stat is great, but deathmatch provides more. This weapon really shines when you maintain all 7 stacks, not for the attack percent buff, but the 12% damage buff. 
but with Hu Tao's attack patterns, you lose out on damage using more normal attacks than charge attacks. In my opinion, it's better to use this weapon on someone else. Black Cliff Pull is another solid option. Its secondary stat is crit damage, which is always welcome. However, you would have to have multiple stacks of its passive to increase your attack percent in order to catch up with the other weapons. If you are fighting a boss or just a single enemy, you may slightly fall behind in damage. Lithic Spear is actually a pretty underrated weapon. The secondary stat is attack percent, and the passive gives a stack of attack percent and crit rate for every Liyue character in your party. On paper, this doesn't sound too impressive, but from damage tests, it holds up well. Having both Xing Chou and Zheng Li and a refinement of 3 and up allows Hu Tao to do some serious damage. The main downside is that it limits your party members. The last but a great option still is an R5 White Tassel, which you should only use if you don't have any other weapons mentioned before. The secondary stat is Crit Rate, which pairs well with Hu Tao's Crit Damage Accession stat. The passive increases Hu Tao's normal attack, so combining a few normal attacks into charge attack is optimal. Now for her artifacts. For early pre-AR45, I recommend the 4-piece Berserker set. It matches well with her kit so that you can stay at least below 70% HP. For early game main stats, you can use an HP% percent Sans, Pyro Damage Bonus Goblet, and either HP or Crit Damage for the headpiece if you're using the 4-piece Berserker set. For endgame artifacts, the most balanced artifact set is the 4-piece Crimson Witch set, especially if you're running reactions. The Vaporize and Melt damage with this set is unparalleled. You only get one stack of the pyro damage bonus, but it is still an extra boost. And trust me, when Dendro comes out in the future, this artifact set will help you do an additional 40% burning damage, so keep this in mind. If you're still farming for a 4-piece Crimson Witch set and running reactions, you can run 2-piece Crimson Witch and 2-piece Wanderer's Troop for the Elemental Mastery, which will boost your reaction damage by quite a bit. 2-piece Crimson Witch and 2-piece Tenacity of the Middle Lift is also great if you're still farming for a 4-piece Crimson set. This set also works well if you're not running reactions and have the Staff of Homa. If you have good substats on your Tenacity set, you can give this a go, but again I still recommend the 4-piece Crimson set. A new potential set for Hu Tao in this rerun is a 4-piece Shimanawa's Reminiscent set. The increased 50% normal and charge attack damage is massive, and nothing to scoff at. However, it has many drawbacks in my opinion. First, you're sacrificing the use of your elemental burst, your main source of AoE, and your playstyle will mainly revolve around normal and charge attacks with fewer options. Also, you consume 15 energy every time you use your elemental skill, which isn't a huge problem if your burst has full energy, but when it is less than half full, you most likely won't be able to use your burst before your elemental skill ends. Utao also needs her elemental burst in situations when she is very low on HP and needs to iframe, but when you sacrifice your own energy, you may not have that option available to you when you most need it. For main stats, use an HP% percent Sans for Utao. Most characters use attack percent, but remember, Utao boosts her attack by consuming HP, so she is an exception. For the goblet, you want pyro damage bonus. For the headpiece, either crit rate or crit damage, depending on what you need more. Try to follow the 2 to 1 crit damage to crit rate golden ratio. For substats, focus on crit rate, crit damage, HP% percent, and elemental mastery for Hu Tao. Attack% percent also has less priority over HP%. Percent. Now let's look at Hu Tao teams. Jing Chou is hands down the best support for Hu Tao. He provides consistent vaporized reactions and synergizes with Hu Tao's attacks perfectly. He heals with his rain source, so as long as you have a shielder, you don't need a healer. His swords give Hu Tao even more resistance to interruption on top of her elemental skills, and he does a ton of damage with his elemental skill and burst. I highly recommend putting him on your Hu Tao team. Zhang Li is the next best support for Hu Tao. People think Zhang Li is just good with everyone, but here's why it makes sense to use him with her. If you do not have another pyro character in your team, it is extremely difficult to use an animal character with a 4-piece Veridescent set and lower pyro resistance in a Hu Tao comp with Xing Chou. Zhang Li's shield solves that problem and reduces elemental resistance by 20%. Having a shield is also very helpful in a Hu Tao comp because in order to fully utilize her elemental burst, it's good to have her at the lowest HP as possible so that she can hit more enemies and not overheal herself. Now to complete a whole team, Albedo is a great addition with both these supports. Albedo's burst can provide your party with 125 elemental mastery with his second passive talent, which will increase Hu Tao's vaporized reaction significantly. His transient blossoms give a nice boost in damage as well. And finally, Geo Resonance gives a nice damage boost for Hu Tao when shielded, and the Geo Resistance Shred allows Zhongli and Albedo to do some sizable damage. With Zhongli's shield and Hu Tao's self-healing, you do not need a designated healer since Xing Chou's Rain Swords can heal anyway. 
This is the new team that is available in patch 2.2. Toma replaces Zhongli in this comp with his shielding capabilities. The main benefit from this team is that you can reduce power resistance with an animal character's 4-piece fair distance set with Toma. Without Toma's burst, it can be a little tricky but doable. Also, you don't have to worry about Toma taking vaporized reactions from Hu Tao. She can still consistently vape with her charge attacks. Kazuha can provide power damage with a full EM build, and his animal capabilities work decently with Hu Tao. If you don't have Kazuha, you can use Sucrose who can transfer her elemental mastery. The downside with Sucrose is that her elemental burst can lift enemies up and Hu Tao can miss her attacks. Another great team comp with good synergy is with Sucrose and Diona. Diona is the best healer to have in Hu Tao comp in my opinion. You have controlled circle healing so that you don't overheal Hu Tao, can provide shields, and can swirl cryo with Sucrose, which gives Hu Tao a few chances to melt instead of vape. I like to pair Diona with a 4-piece instructor set to transfer 80 elemental mastery over, which is a significant buff. Her shield strength with all HP artifacts can suffer a tiny bit, but it should work fine. Again, Sucrose can transfer her elemental mastery over as well and swirl cryo into Sucrose's burst with Diona. Adding Kaya to the mix allows you to use melt reactions more frequently. It's not as consistent with just vaporized reactions with Xingqiu, but it is another decent option especially if you like a melt comp. Cryo Resonance also helps with crit rate. If you use Rosaria instead, she can provide even more crit rate for the entire party, but in my opinion Kaya's burst seems to work better with Hu Tao and Xingqiu than Rosaria's. For teams without Xingqiu, I would go with Mono Pyro teams. C1 Xiangling can reduce Pyro resistance by 15% with Goba, and at C6, her Pyro Nato gives a 15% Pyro damage bonus. Kazuha can provide even more Pyro damage bonus from here. Lastly, you can use Diona to shield, transfer EM with a 4-piece instructor set, and heal. I am not a huge fan of using Bennett with Hu Tao since he heals Hu Tao to 70% which makes her lose her 33 pyro damage bonus, but it is entirely up to you. Infusing Kazuha's burst with pyro is much easier to do with Bennett since his burst debuffs Kazuha with pyro. Using C2 Chengyun is a niche comp where Chengyun's constellation reduces Hu Tao's elemental skill cooldown. The downtime is much lower this way and actually very fun. This comp doesn't work that well with Xingqiu because Hu Tao's cooldown ends too quickly and you have to wait for Xingqiu's cooldown to finish, so a comp like this with Xiangling works pretty well. If you don't want to use Xingqiu, you can try using Mona if you like. Hu Tao can enjoy the benefits of Mona's burst damage bonus along with decreased power resistance and an elemental mastery transfer from Sucrose. Sucrose can also swirl Hydro into a burst for Hu Tao. Bennett can boost everyone's damage as well and synergizes mostly with Sucrose and Mona on this team. One interesting thing with Hu Tao Mona is that Blood Blossom will not pop Mona's bubble, so Blood Blossom can vaporize the first 4 seconds, and then Mona's burst can do tons of damage after. Now for sub DPS teams. The idea is to have another DPS unit while Hu Tao's elemental skill is on cooldown. The synergy is very good in this team in my opinion. Once you set up Xingqiu's burst with Hu Tao and her elemental skill is over, Yoimiya can jump in with her elemental skill. She has a bit of time with Xingqiu's burst. Although Yoimiya can vaporize every hit, it's still some damage when Hu Tao is on cooldown. Yoimiya then can finish everything off with her burst and apply Aurora's Blaze which can add some extra damage for Hu Tao as well. You also don't have to worry too much about Aurora's Blaze stealing vapes from Hu Tao either. Diona's shield benefits both DPS units, especially Yoimiya. Ayaka also works well with Hu Tao because of her burst. It applies Cryo very quickly and Hu Tao can do some massive damage. Ayaka's 4-piece Blizzard Strayer set works extremely well with Xingqiu and Diona, and you can just stack crit damage. Diona can also be a great battery for Ayaka with a sacrificial bow. Ganyu can also jump in while Hu Tao's elemental skill is on cooldown. Her elemental burst can apply cryo in a large AoE and can freeze well with Xingqiu. I recommend using Zhongli here for the 20% elemental resistance shred. Hu Tao and Chao can also work well together during each other's downtime. You have the combination of Riptide and Blood Blossom, which has interesting synergy. C2 Xingqiu is important in this comp because his burst reduces enemies' hydro resistance by 15%. Zhongli again provides shields and a 20% elemental resistance shred. Lastly, a slightly niche comp but has surprisingly good synergy. When Hu Tao is finished with her elemental skill with Xingqiu's burst, Nianfei can come in with her elemental burst for a shield, which works well with Hu Tao. Sayu has a 4-piece Veridescent set to reduce Pyro Elemental Resistance. Careful not to overheal Hu Tao with Sayu's burst though. Thank you very much for watching my Hu Tao guide. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Also, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash frenchtutor underscore. Take care now.